Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to day two of Coffee with Dr. Tom. I've got my coffee. It's an iced coffee this morning. Hopefully, you've got yours. And uh, uh, today is entitled Foods, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. And if you recall from yesterday, and those of you that have heard me speak before, I've said this many times, that every degenerative disease, whether it's an immune-related disease like a viral infection or cancer, but an immune-related disease or an autoimmune-related disease, like See, all whether it's an immune-related disease like a viral infection. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow I had some backup there. I'm hoping it's okay now. Um, so every disease, as far as I know, every degenerative disease is a disease of inflammation. At the cellular level, the cell's on fire. And you've heard me say many times, it's just a question, is it a brain cell or a kidney cell or an immune cell? Is it gasoline or kerosene? Where is it coming from? And so today is about the most common source of the trigger for inflammation, gasoline on the fire, is what's on the end of your fork. So hopefully in the next 20 to 30 minutes, you'll walk away with some new understandings of how you can cool down some of the fire inside our bodies. And we all have inflammation. Inflammation's not a bad thing. Excessive inflammation is a bad thing, okay? So thank you so much for attending and thank you for all the great comments that you're making. Uh, it really makes my day and it fuels me and my entire team. Marzi and I read them all, the team reads them all. So thank you so much for the comments. And also, uh, if you think this is of value, please share this link with your family and friends. More people that hear this kind of information, the stronger they will be, the less likely to have a complication. That's our goal here. And any slide that's got the pearls on it, it's a pearl, pick up on it. So I'm just gonna review for less than two minutes, some basic points from yesterday that are so important. Uh, prevention is the ultimate principle of wisdom. To cure a disease after it's manifested is like digging a well when one is thirsty or forging a weapon after the war has begun. So those that are suffering now from a viral related response, we're having to dig a well when you're thirsty. Okay, let's dig it. Those that have not had a reaction, we're trying to get to it before uh, there's a war going on in your body. So that's, that's why we're doing this over these seven days. And there's just two studies I wanna show you from yesterday. This came out of the British Medical Journal that the vast majority of people that are exposed to this current virus will not have a reaction. Um, mild symptoms, a sore throat for a day, a little runny nose, maybe a little gas or diarrhea for a day, and then they're fine. But, uh, and those that are having a reaction mainly are an elderly or who already have another chronic disease. No vaccine, no agents are available for this. And the mainstay of treatment is to support of care, make sure they can keep breathing, but nothing that strengthens the immune system, nothing that avoids throwing gasoline on the fire. So these are basic 101 concepts that you can apply yourself for you and your family because our hospital personnel are busy trying to keep you alive. The only people they're letting in are the ones that are in life-threatening conditions. So what you do at home is critically important. Now, as a reminder, every year for the last nine years, the Center for Disease Control tells us that somewhere between 23 and 61,000 people die every year from the flu in the US. We haven't had 61,000 deaths in the entire world with this current pandemic. So it's important to deal with, but let's keep a straight head about this, right? Take some preventive measures and the vast majority of us will be okay. And the last pearl that I wanna give you from yesterday is Dr. Bland's comment, that it's important to remember that our current pandemic is a lifestyle disease. Pretty much the only people that are going to have a problem with this virus are those whose immune system can't take care of it on its own. And the virus takes control. Well, if your immune system cannot take care of it on its own, 
It's how we've lived our lives for the vast majority of people that determines the strength of our immune system. And are you throwing too much gasoline on the fire uh, currently? And have you done that in the past? Well, we all have to some degree, but let's put the fire out now as much as we can. Now, about 75% of the food that Westerners consume doesn't benefit the good guys in your gut, which we know modulates, which is a great geek word that means has its hands on the steering wheel of how your body runs. That the good bacteria in your gut have a great deal of control over the function of your immune system. As an example, remember, 70 to 80% of the immune systems in your gut, and it's all interacting with that good bacteria in your gut. And most of the food that Westerners eat, 75% of the food doesn't do anything for the gut and makes it worse. It's the whites, the white rice, the white bread, the white pastas, that we, the white sugars that we eat. They do not support a healthy gut. So let's just keep that in mind. The consequence is that the microbiota, the bacteria in the gut of modern man is much reduced in its size and diversity. And it's the diversity of the microbiome. And we have lots of videos in our YouTube channel that you can watch of how to build a healthy microbiome. They're all free, they're all there for you of all the steps you can take to build a healthy microbiome. The bottom line, this is what we want on the end of our fork every day. It's called the rainbow diet, multiple colors. And I'm gonna talk about why that is today. What is the importance of the components in the different vegetables and fruits that we have access to and how do they help us? And how do you prepare those, uh, those fruits and those vegetables? And they're basic fruits that are really good for you, basic vegetables. You don't have to be eating uh, a macrobiotic diet and, and sprouts and uh, 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 tofu every day. Sprouts are great for you. Tofu is okay for some people, but you don't have to eat weird foods. It's the common food that we all have access to that I will show you is so powerful in strengthening your immune systems. One of the things we have to remember is how you prepare your vegetables is really important. You microwave the vegetables, 97% of the flavonoids, which you'll learn in a little bit, are really important to strengthen your immune system. 97% of them are destroyed. You boil your vegetables, 66% of them are destroyed. You steam your vegetables, minimal loss. So having steaming baskets uh, that go in the pot. And if you don't have a steaming basket, you can't go out to buy one right now. You can order one online. Maybe it can be delivered. But in the meantime, just put a little round bowl in the bottom of the pot with water in there and then you put your vegetables on top of you know, the, actually, I don't know that that'll work because they'll fall off into the water. Um, you'll have to come up with your own way of steaming them. But steaming is a much safer way of preparing your vegetables. That's one bullet point. And what diet do you do? Do I do the Mediterranean diet? Do I do the ketogenic diet? Do I do the paleo diet? Do um, what, what do, the autoimmune diet, what diet do I do? There's a whole world of info, information on that that you can learn. Bottom line is an anti-inflammatory diet. And many of those are successful in doing that. But these two books by my friend Mark Hyman that have come out in the last year, they give you the big picture overview about different diets and what do you wanna focus on for you and your family? What exactly how should I be thinking about my food selections? These two books by Mark are really excellent, and I'd recommend that everyone pick them up. Now that we're at home, we might have a little time to read for a half hour a day or so, or just go to the chapter on whatever your question is and um, look it up here. But these are really good references for you. So I'm not gonna go into paleo versus ketogenic. They both are of value in some situations. You'll get that information from these references. But I wanna show you one thing, they came out, this was such a game changer for me and my understanding. There was an article that came out in a British medical journal called the Poly Pill, a strategy to reduce cardiovascular disease by more 
than 75%. And they looked at a number of studies and they said with their logic, if you put a pill together that had six different, dr five drugs and some B vitamin folic acid, you'll reduce cardiovascular disease by 75%. Another group published a paper eight months later called the Poly Meal, a more natural, safer, and probably tastier than the poly pill strategy. And they did the same logic. And what they showed was that uh, if you use these seven foods in your diet weekly, you reduce cardiovascular disease by more than 75%. And what are the foods? Chocolate, wine, fish, nuts, garlic, fruit, and vegetables. And this is what it looks like. These are the studies that they based it on. You drink a little bit of red wine every day. You reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease by 32%. You have fish, cold water fish, four times a week. You reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease by 14%. And dark chocolate every day, 21%. Now I know everyone's smiling when I say have a little dark chocolate every day, but this is how you do it so that you don't throw your blood sugar out of balance and gain weight eating chocolate every day, dark chocolate every day. Get a square of the best dark chocolate you have access to, put it in your mouth, under your tongue, don't let it touch your teeth. Don't let it touch your teeth. It takes two to three minutes to dissolve. And during that time, your taste buds are sending a message up to your brain that says, chocolate's here. And your brain says, chocolate. So here's what happens when you follow the principles of the poly meal with wine, fish, nuts, garlic, fruit, vegetables. You reduce cardiovascular disease by 76%, which means an increase in life expectancy from cardiovascular disease of nine years for men and an increase in life expectancy free from cardiovascular disease of 8.1 years for women because you reduce the inflammation. And they just measured cardiovascular disease the same concept for your immune system. So these are some basic things that we all should be including in our diet every day. Now, there's a lot of talk out there about fasting. It's been talked about now for a number of years. Well, uh, in the Bible, it goes back a couple thousand years. Uh, but the science has become really impressive about fasting and what fasting, what are the benefits of fasting? This is what I want to say to you today. It's worth looking into fasting, and there's a number of pieces of information on our website. We'll put some links up for you, but here's the bottom line. It really helps your body, and it helps your immune system to control the amount of food that you're eating and how often you're eating that food. For example, there's something called time-restricted fasting. What does that mean? And this is safe for everyone, as far as I know, everyone. Limit your consumption of foods within an eight hour block in the day. What does that mean? It means when you wake up, you can have a cup of coffee if you want. Maybe you don't have breakfast, lunch, like a brunch until about 11 o'clock or noon. Then you have dinner about six to seven o'clock and you don't snack for the rest of the night and you don't snack in the morning beforehand. So that's called an 816, having your food within an eight hour window. The only people that have to be careful about that are those that are diabetic, whose blood sugar currently is very volatile. Just make sure you're measuring your blood sugar and that you don't go into a low blood sugar state. But those people are out on the um, extreme of highly sensitive blood sugar levels. For everybody else, an 816 or something similar, do it for two or three days and just notice how you feel. You have more energy, there's more brain clarity, and it strengthens your immune system, allowing it to fight whatever it has to fight. Once again, there's a lot of great information out about fasting and different types of fasting and products that help. They're great. And there's more information on my site that you can learn about that. But the idea of an 816 is something that almost all of us can do. Limit your food to within 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. as an example of that eight hour window. 
Have coffee in the morning is fine if you drink coffee or tea and don't snack at night after dinner. And just notice within a couple of days, if you aren't sleeping more soundly, your energy's up, your mental clarity is up and your immune system is functioning better. Prolonged fasting promotes coordinated effects that would be difficult to achieve with any drug. I mean, this is a bottom line is that as you do this on a regular basis, your body changes and gets much stronger and more functional. Now, I'm going to go to preparing foods. And what's the difference between kneading of, of, of bread, and some of you know I was a baker for many years, kneading bread and then the finished product of a loaf of bread. That crusting that occurs on that um, kneaded bread when you bake it, um, it's a, it's a uh, chemical process that produces something called advanced glycation end products or ages. These are not good for you to have in excess. And we want to reduce the effects of ages in our diet, in our diet to help our immune system function better. So whether you're barbecuing meats on the grill and you get those nice black lines on there, that black is a, a burning of the proteins in meat. And on the tomato, it's a burning of the proteins that produces these advanced glycation end products. Nothing wrong with barbecuing if you know how to minimize the complications of it. Over the last couple of decades, the last 20 years, there's been a lot of evidence come out about how important it is that these advanced glycation end products cause more inflammation and more chronic inflammatory diseases. So you want to reduce the effect of ages in your body. How do you do that? Foods rich in both protein and fats, mostly of animal origin, and cooked at high and dry heat will produce a lot more ages. Knowledge about this is important in, your, in how you cook and some of the results of when you're cooking these foods are. If you fry beef compared to stewing the beef, if you roast a chicken compared to boiling a chicken, if you broil a frankfurter or a hot dog, compared to boiling it. If you deep fry potatoes, compared to boiling the potatoes, you produce more ages. And we're all gonna get ages. That's, you know, there's no way to avoid that. But as you're aware of the way that you like to cook, is it a way that produces more ages, more advanced glycation end products? And they're called that because they age us too quickly. Then you say, okay, so what can I do to minimize the effect of these ages? which is why I'm telling you about this concept. Polyphenols are a group of compounds in fruits and vegetables that grab these ages and diminish their ability to cause damage in your body, and they reduce the inflammation from these ages. That's why I use capers so much. Marzi uh, will cook with capers because I love the taste of capers. And capers will reduce the ages in the meats that you're cooking or any other food that you're cooking. I'll show you a graph of it in a minute. And I'm going to give you this study from my friend, Dr. Deanna Minnick, who wrote this beautiful paper on the polyphenols in different food, uh, fruits and vegetables. And she calls it the rainbow diet, eating the colors of the rainbow. And what she shows us is if you look at this page in her study, I'm giving you the study, you see these 61 foods and the colors of the food that have red for lycopenes, orange for beta carotenes, yellow for lutenes and zeaxanthins, green for folates, purple for flavonoids, all of these compounds grab the ages and neutralize their ability to cause more inflammation in your body. So if you love a barbecued steak once in a while, you wanna make sure to have a bunch of vegetables, that different vegetables that grab those um, advanced glycation end products and gets, ri gets rid of them. Here's a second page in her study. So it's a total of 115 foods that she shows you what the benefits are to those foods, what compounds they contain. 
And then she shows you the page with the different colors of the rainbow and whether they're anti-inflammatory or if they strengthen your immune system. That's the red ones and with immune modulation. What does that mean? It means having their hands on the steering wheel to have a safer, stronger immune system. So that's red onions, red potatoes, red pears, lingonberries, nectarines, pink grapefruit, radicchio, radishes, red beets. You see all the different, and you can alternate every day between these foods, and you're giving your family um, just a, a cornucopia of great foods that will minimize the ages, the advanced glycation end products, and the inflammation that comes from them. And then this last page on hers is about the blues and the purples. Many of you have heard me talk for years about one cup of blueberries a day for three years, and your brain is functioning as well as it was 13 years earlier. And you read those studies, and you go, what? And so we've always had frozen organic blueberries in our freezer, and Marzi uses them to make our smoothies, or if I want a sweet at night, you know, then uh, I'll just get a bowl of blueberries and eat them frozen with a spoon. They're really good and they're quite satisfying. Uh, but once again, uh, you'll have this information available to you about the different vegetables, the different polyphenols they have that all help to produce an anti-inflammatory effect, which allows your immune system to function stronger. Polyphenols represent a promising alternative for the development of what they call natural medicines with anti-glycation activity, but they're, they're synthetics, they're pharmaceuticals, and it's a nice promising alternative. Eat the colors of the rainbow, and they're gonna help you stay younger internally with less uh, inflammation. And you've heard me say so many times, base hits win the ball game. It's the little things you do that win the ball game. And I purposely chose this picture of the Chicago Cubs, because I'm from Chicago originally, who won the World Series a couple of years ago, first time, and I don't remember, it's like 70 years, 80 years, meaning miracles can happen. So as you do the little base hits in your life, you know, you have some Brussels sprouts one day, and you have some bok choy the next day, and you have blueberries one day, and blackberries the next day, and you know, as you do these little base hits of new foods that you may not have tried before, you win the ball game. You reduce the inflammation in your body. These are the ones that many people have easy access to for polyphenols, and they're all great for you. But Dr. Minnick's article will give you the whole 131, I think it was, different fruits or vegetables and which polyphenols are in each one. But I put this article in for you because from the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition because I really like the title. Identification of the 100 Richest Dietary Sources of Polyphenols. And so you have this article available and you can see that dark chocolate's right up there. Now, number one is cloves. So those of you that like tea, you put a couple of cloves in your tea and you're getting quite a bit of polyphenols. Look at the numbers on the polyphenols in cloves compared to um, uh, are blueberries even on the top of this list? They're not. Blueberries are down further than the top 15 here uh, and compared to capers, which are at the bottom of this first group that I clipped for you. Um, so cloves, maybe you'll try adding cloves to your coffee. Maybe you'll try adding a little clove to your tea. Maybe you'll add it to cold water as a refreshing drink. I don't know, you know, but fool around with it and see what you can do, but add polyphenols in your diet every day. It'll do a lot to support you. Now, people that are gluten-free, you can eat like this, and this is gluten-free, but is it healthy? And the answer is no, it's not. The deep fried potatoes, the uh, uh, barbecued uh, frankfurters, it's not the healthy way to eat. This is a much healthier way to eat. And I thank Dr. Deanna Minnick for these slides so, to give you such a great visual on this. Walnuts. I really like this idea of nuts. Uh, nuts are a superfood and they help to reduce inflammation. They're high in polyphenols. This is just to give you an example about one of the nuts that we all have access to in every supermarket. Walnuts contain double the concentration of phenols of most of the fruits and vegetables. 
and they're very high in antioxidants. They change the good guys in the gut. They change the microbiome to that of a younger, healthier microbiome. And I will do, I will do like three, four walnuts a day, couple, three Brazil nuts a day. If you have two Brazil nuts a day, you get all the selenium you need in a day, which is a nutrient, a mineral that helps your immune system function better. So the idea here today is about diversity. Explore different fruits and vegetables because the highest concentration that determines inflammation is a gasoline or kerosene is what's on the end of your fork. This is something that you can explore in these times that we're all isolated now at home and hopefully you'll develop some habits and you'll find some foods that you and your family like very much. Now, once again, we're gonna give you all the transcripts I'm having every day transcribed so that you can read it or you can send it to your loved ones. You can rewatch the videos. We give you the links to the videos. I'm giving you all the slides. I'm giving you the studies. They're all there, the MP3s. They're all there for you for free at no charge. If you can, if you feel it's of value, we ask you to make a contribution. Help me keep my staff working on this because we're all working really hard. I'm not exaggerating to say Marzi and I worked on this this presentation today for 10 hours yesterday to make sure it came across. And still we lost the internet for a moment, but what are you gonna do, right? But if you feel okay about it to make a um, contribution, please do. If you don't, fine, they're there for you anyway. No one is gonna be refused this information because of resources. So if you want, you're welcome to use the, the code scholarship in the promo code. Uh, if you're able to pay $37 for the whole week worth of slides, please do. It'll just help us keep this going for you. Please share this with your family and friends. Like us on Facebook. Make any comments you'd like. Uh, we, we, we really read everything and look forward to hearing from you. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you all so very much. Have a safe day.